This is a 1967 Mustang. I've owned it since 1977. I'm perhaps the second owner. And uh, like many of these cars, it came with uh, manual, disc, uh, manual drum brakes. No power brakes. Uh, about two years ago, I decided to upgrade to front disc power brakes. And so I, uh, I ordered a kit from CRSP. And the kit involves this uh, power brake booster master cylinder and then uh, the the disc units themselves for each front wheel there's a problem with this kit and it involves around the bolts that mount everything to the firewall and you can see two bolts up here there's one bolt there one bolt there they attach a bracket this is a we'll call that the, the outside bracket they attach the outside bra bracket to the firewall and then they screw into an inside bracket that's inside the car. That inside bracket is what holds your pedal. Unfortunately, there are six other bolts, and we can't see those six other bolts because they're in the uh, they're in the worst possible areas you can imagine. the The way this is installed is you mount the uh, the outside bracket with the two bolts you can see, and then with two additional bolts that are about two inches below those bolts. So there are four bolts that, that screw through the outer bracket and they thread into the inner bracket. You then have to mount the power brake booster to the bracket. The brake booster, I believe it had studs sticking out of the back of it that go through four holes in the outer bracket that you attach nuts to. I think that's the way it worked. You can't see them. You can just sort of Feel them, and uh, when I did it, I, I removed the export brace. I left the hood on because I was concerned about getting everything lined back up with the hood, and uh, it was just me at the time, and I would have had a hard time doing it alone. So I left the hood on, but I probably should have took the hood off. It would have made it easier too if I'd somehow taken out the steering column and worked from beneath, but that steering column is a big, big job, so I wasn't going to do that. But anyway, it's on there. It was a very tight fit. This is just a 289 engine, so there's room around it. But the uh, master cylinder comes very close to the shock tower. There's not much room to work in there. And when I installed the uh, the brake booster I, I had to lay across the top of the engine I just about needed a chiropractor when I was done it was very difficult to do so you're saying what's my problem my problem is what's on the inside of the car and we'll discuss that in a moment here you can see two brackets that are used inside the the Mustang the top bracket is a manual brake bracket the bottom one is a power brake bra bracket. Uh, for some reason, each each unit, each bracket has holes for both power brake pedals and manual brake pedals. So the manual brake uses the large hole in the bottom. If you have power brakes, your pedal uh, goes pivots on the small hole on the top. So Ford at least made it go both ways in, in, in that manner. There is a difference though with these. This top one this top bracket is uh, it features welded on nuts and therefore to uh, to bolt this together there's a bolt that comes into it from the firewall through the nut and holds it tight the bottom one is from is from Ford if you bought a bought the car with power brakes in that case on the back of the power brake booster there are studs sticking out and the stud just pushes through here and you then turn on a nut. Very easy to deal with. Unfortunately this kit does not provide you with a new bracket and does not have you for instance drill out these nuts. It has you try to put bolts through the firewall into the bracket from the engine side which is very difficult to do. While these brackets are bolted in securely say if you have it bolted onto the firewall you cannot remove or insert the bolt at the top 
which holds in the power brake pedal. It cannot be done. These bolts have to be removed or severely loosened in order for this thing to wiggle enough to get that bolt out. And I'll tell you why that's very important here in a moment. This is the booster assembly that you receive from CSRP. Uh, over on the left, of course, we have the master cylinder. In the middle, we have the booster. And on the right, we have this bracket. And therein lies the problem. This bracket is bolted on to the firewall with four bolts that go from left to right. So you're putting a bolt through the firewall and threading it into those threaded nuts inside the car. That's not too hard. However, you can't do that with the brake booster on. You just can't. So you do that with the brake booster unbolted and you will actually unnutted right here. There's four nuts, two on top, two on bottom. Those four nuts hold the booster onto the bracket. So when you put the bracket onto the firewall, you do it with the bracket only. You then have to mount the booster onto the bracket. Now I don't you probably you hopefully you noticed earlier on in this video that there's very little room under the hood and there's very little room to get anything behind this booster anything to the right of this booster this is no man's land in here but you're expected to put on nut 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 and that is a real pain in the butt here you see two brake pedals for the 67 mustang bottom one is the original that was on the car. It was built in 1967. It's for manual brakes. And it mounts in the lower of those two holes on the inside bracket, the larger of the, the two holes. This is the pedal that I received from CR, I don't know, CRSP, CSRP uh, brake people for their kit, for their power disc brake kits. And it's a, it's a replacement. It's a, it's, it's a, a copy, I should say, of the original Ford power disc brake pedal. It mounts at the t upper of the two holes because that's where the power brake pedal mounts. So they sent me this one and it uh, looks real nice. And while I was uh, putting it in the car, that happened. It turns out uh, I talked to uh, the the fella at the company, and he was he was very friendly and helpful. And uh, he said this is supposed to be spin welded in there. In other words, apparently they put that inside and spin it so fast that it fuses the metal together. It actually melts the metal together. Well, this spin weld didn't work because if you look really close on there on the shiny part, there's spray paint on it. So, and there's even spray paint in here. In the hole so it was never attached so this was uh, about a year and a half ago or two years and uh, they they sent me a new one they sent me a replacement pedal I got it in the car and it's been in there since then well just a, a week ago guess what happens this breaks loose again the one in the car did the exact same thing uh, the man from the uh, brake company said Gosh, that's it's extremely rare, rare to see one of those fail, and he's certainly never ever heard of two of them failing, so it must be, didn't really come out and say so, but it must be my problem. But really, I mean, if, it, if they aren't welded together, that's, that's your problem. So it's sitting in the car right now, wobbling. Whereas the, the whole pedal assembly is supposed to pivot on this gold colored bolt it's now pivoting on the uh, area where it's supposed to be welded I was concerned that the pedal could slide down onto this smaller section and possibly bind itself in there and cause a you know a bad problem so here's what I did I I made this that is a section of this it's the water pipe that actually feeds our house. It's a one inch inside diameter polyethylene pipe. So I cut off a half inch piece 
I cut a notch out of it. I glued it onto the end of a dowel. And laying down on my back under the under the dash, I did this with it. So now at least the pedal arm cannot get off onto the small section and bind up. It still it still wobbles, but at least it's not dangerously so. So that's that's the way the car sits right now. And that's my experience with C whatever you call the company, RSP. They have uh, played ball with me on this. Um, I, I asked if, if uh, what it would take for me to just get rid of the power brake assembly because if I get rid of the power brake assembly, go back to manual brakes, then I don't have to use the upper hull and then I can conceivably work on the thing because right now you can't get this pedal out of the car until you remove the power brake booster. And that power brake booster, which you saw earlier in this video, is a, uh, a real bear to get in and out. And I no longer wish to do that, so uh, I believe there's a master cylinder coming on the way for manual disc drum brakes, which they have uh, generously supplied to me, but still, it just doesn't make up for the headaches. Thank you.